Tell me if you've heard this before. Corporate work is boring. There's no creativity. Listen, I get it. I've done those jobs when you're in a six foot by six foot cubicle and you're filming the worst looking interview ever. However, there are other type of corporate gigs that are very fun. Those usually come down to when the when the company is giving an effort outside of the company. They're collaborating with someone or there's some type of goal or mission to help someone outside of the company. That means you gotta travel somewhere. I love when we have to travel somewhere. So this one came explicitly from this vlog. I use this platform to share my problems, my wins, the, the whole journey. But if you're on the audience side of this and you're a scrolling through YouTube videos, there's been times where people have hiring uh, capabilities. And when they see my videos, they see me working all the time. Therefore, that means I'm trusted by other clientele. They, they see me talk. I'm a normal person. Then they can just skip the whole vetting process of, of putting out an inquiry on Production Hub or asking, do you know anybody in this area? So that is fantastic for me because this is growing my network. And I get to do these types of jobs that I 100% have the skill to do, but if you don't have the network to get them, then you don't do them. I'm not sure how many details I can give out. I wasn't under NDA or anything, but I think I'm just gonna be a little lean on the actual specific information. So the gist of it is there are some corporate employees who are going to this ball field today and kind of live out their childhood dreams of putting on the jersey and doing all these different exercises and then having a mock game at the end. So for the first half, I'm gonna be on the gimbal. Uh, in typical Florida fashion, we started seeing a couple raindrops coming down and then we thought it was gonna be, the whole day was gonna be canceled and then it quickly opened back up and we could continue filming. I've never used the A7R5 before. It was a little different than what I'm used to. Usually it's an FX3 or A7S3 or A7 IV. But for the most part, it was fine, worked great. Uh, I really liked that it had an EVF because when I had to put the gimbal down, majority of the day was on the gimbal, then I got to pick up the 200 to 600 and it was really nice. So here I'm using the LCD screen and then uh, just being able to use the EVF was, was so much better. Uh, I didn't want to get hit, so I shot through the net and man, these old guys can crack. It's fun. I mean, think of the last time that guy hit a baseball. Probably in the 80s. When these corporate jobs have a mission statement or a goal, I need to keep that at the forefront of my mind. That way, I can orient my shots to fit that best. So in this case, they're bringing a certain group of people here. And I was running around with a gimbal. And then I realized, you know, I could get a lot more emotion if I pick up the telephoto and zoom in right on their faces when they're hitting the ball, their eyes are lighting up, they're smiling. So it's not just about the coverage. It's about getting it to fit the direction that the client wants it to go. Now we're gonna do our testimonials. They suggested here, but my suggestion is here. Kind of get the curvature of the seats, get a lot of depth, some nice bokeh and the field too. And that is really important. They might give an idea of what they want, but it's my job to say, hey, visually, I think this would look better. And they can reject it or accept it. But I am so happy I picked these up. The Sony UWPs, they're so much slimmer than my Rode Lobs. They fit perfectly on my camera, and it was a, a, a bit larger of an expense, but I'm very happy I went with it. It's funny though, because once I get these larger or more premium audio types of tools, I, I then get hit from the audio guys who are like, that is base level audio. If you really wanted to step it up, then you could get such and such well I don't, I don't need such and such i'll hire you if i need such and such but for me having two transmitters is so nice and my, my rig is just working seamlessly so we can crop it out right here, and get about here. yeah that's perfect okay yeah we had to ask them to pause just got cleared to put some lights down, which is nice. 
and we're gonna use my where is it is that case back there under the board i bought an led light that takes beam mount power just for this type of situation This shoot had its fair share of curveballs thrown at us, uh, but that's just how it goes, you know, especially uh, when we're working with different entities, everybody's got their own set of rules. But if this is the type of corporate work that I can book, where it's um, there, there is a crew, there is a lot of direction, that's the most important thing, direction and structure, and we get to do some really cool activities, I will do this all the time. You know, my goal when people ask me, oh, what, what do you want to do later? What would be your dream job? It would be the DP of an Anthony Bourdain style travel show. But I love being able to get a much, a much more manicured story uh, in these types of production as practice for those types of doc docu-series types of jobs it really helps me when i get to uh test certain things or you know it's not live it's not um there's no like verite rules that i have to abide by so we can ask them can you say it again we're trying to hit towards this emotion does that you know work with you uh, so here's that little led panel doing its job single v-mount that was important no ballast this interview was by far my favorite i just really like the the uh the leading lines to the subject who was right here we have a nice purple blue in the sky some backlight coming in and the, the lights off so the waveform is super crunched at the bottom but i popped into i don't need to be in the high base iso at 12,800, but i am because i knew as the interview was going to happen it was about a 10 minute interview i was going to have to adjust the nd uh, the variable nd and uh whereas if i had stayed at 800 it would have been a little cleaner but then i would have been at f28 and i would not have been adjust the exposure as the sun slightly drops that's why this variable nd is so valuable and I'm pretty sure sony's the only one with it i maybe red has one i think on their on their flagship but it's fantastic and i just thought to myself i want to be like her when i grow up Normally, to get a red splash that big, you would need the Aperture P600C or something larger. I don't own that, but there's a massive red sign. So I'm going to use that to splash on the background, give that nice red, and then give her a little bit of a rim. And then there was two Aperture MCs that the, the lead video guy said, can we put these in the back to break it up? Fantastic idea. And... That's it. So we just had my LED panel being the key with a little bit of diffusion paper on the front, those two little LEDs in the back, and then using the existing en environment in the best way possible. So if we had turned a little bit and we had that red on her face uh, competing with the key, it would have been horrible. And that's what I'm always trying to figure out. I go to the place, look at the existing lighting. How can I make it work for me? I really enjoy corporate work and I know it's not for everyone, but I love the higher rate and the structure. So do you guys enjoy it? Do you do it begrudgingly or better yet? What is that goal project for you? And that concludes the videography portion of this video. Now to MMA. I'm so bad at fighting. I make so many mistakes, like I just don't cover my head. So in this case, he's going to throw a head kick and my defense, nowhere to be seen. Absolutely nowhere. I also tend to bend forward a lot. So in this part, I just say, hey, do you want to kick my head? Here, let me bring it down to your leg so you have an easier shot. Boom. He goes, are you okay? I said, yeah, because that is such a beginner move. And he goes, okay, well, if you're good, then we're going to keep rocking. And here he goes with a, a heavy boom, heavy hook, lead hook. So I'm not good. And I, it's, it's really frustrating because I'm a pretty athletic person. I've skated my whole life. But in here, it's so brand new. The fact that I got out of the way of that was, was such a good 
tactic, and then here we go, body shot. That's probably the only thing I did. But yeah, it, it's just really frustrating. I know it'll get better. He hits me with another body kick, and uh, and then he, like, I, I at least block that a little bit, but then he starts to light me up, framing off me, putting me off balance. I'm not looking at him. It's just bad. It's just bad everywhere. Now he gets, I put myself against the wall, and he just stands and goes. So this is something that I really, really want to improve on. Um, it's just hard. That would have hurt if I didn't get out of the way, that teep. Um, so if anybody else has had this experience, I know there's a couple of people in my audience, but uh, I'm, I'm not that deep in, but yeah, I, ju I just want to get better and uh, it's, it's going slow.